In this video, I'm going to take you through the process of making my own printed circuit boards, such as this one, or that one, at home. It should be mentioned that I'm using the term at home quite loosely here. The entire process of course starts with the layout itself. The PCB design software that I like to use is DipTrace, which is shown in this image right here. I've been using it for years and I'm quite happy with it. Now some of you might be wondering why I don't just upload the layout files to the likes of PCBWay and get picture perfect PCBs delivered within just a few days for five bucks plus delivery. Well, the answer is simple. Sometimes time is at essence. Especially for a first revision PCB, which is almost always guaranteed to have some errors in it, or for a simple proof of concept, I still prefer to make a few PCBs myself and when I'm reasonably convinced that the layout will work, then I send it off to PCBWay. My stock PCB materials that I like to use are covered with a positive photoresist. Therefore the next step is to print the finalized layout onto some transparent film. It took me ages to find some transparencies that actually work well with an inkjet printer. So if you're looking for a good recommendation, here it is. The PCB material I'm using is made by German manufacturer Bungard, which I buy in 100 by 160 millimeter pieces. They are available in smaller sizes, but I just prefer to cut them myself. For the cutting process, I use this tiny Proxon tabletop circular saw. It's actually quite effective for cutting PCBs if you use the right blade. Now to make the design process a little bit easier for me, I tend to use some standard sizes. For instance, 50 by 50 millimeters or 100 by 50 millimeters. I usually have some stock material cut to those sizes available, but if I need anything special, I'll just cut it up real quick. To bridge the time required for the printed PCB layout to dry, I like to prepare the developer and the agent. I'm making quite liberal use of the word I here because the person shown in the following footage is my research assistant. Not only did she patiently endure hours of filming, but also developed all lab protocols involved in this process. The developer used is fairly standard sodium hydroxide solution with a concentration of 10 grams sodium hydroxide per one liter of developer solution. My etchant of choice since the day that I ran out of sodium per sulfate is a mixture of 12% hydrogen peroxide and a very highly diluted 8% hydrochloric acid solution. If you're interested to learn more about this etchant, check out the video description. I'll include a link to a previous video I made on the subject and a blog article where I'm outlining the exact mixture ratios. After all necessary solutions have been prepared and the printout has been given enough time to dry, the printout is attached to the PCB, of course after removing the protective film, using some sticky tape. The photoresist is then exposed for about two and a half minutes using this really old but really reliable UV exposure unit which will remind us with a really annoying tone when the exposure process is over. After the exposure process has been completed, the PCB is removed from the transparent film and is immediately lowered into the developer solution and the timer is set for 2 minutes and 30 seconds. When the time has expired, the PCB is removed from the developer solution and being washed with regular tap water just to remove some of the uh, remaining sodium hydroxide before moving on to the etching process. The required etching time depends a lot on the different features present on the PCB. I went a little bit more in detail on that in the corresponding video. However, we found that a great method, especially with smaller SMD footprints, is to backlight the PCB briefly uh, to be able to tell whether or not the etching process has been completed. After removing the PCB from the etching solution and rinsing it with water, the last step to do is to strip off the remaining photoresist using some acetone. 
These two test PCBs show very well how even tiny SMD footprints, such as the LGA5K style for MEMS microphone, can be edged using this method. 